Now we're gonna see Todd White's clip sped up quite a bit and looped back and forth. Now this is where we can see what's really going on here. The leg on our right is supposed to be the short leg, and this is the leg which should be miraculously growing, but it's not. So this video came out in January of 2019. It's been seen by tens of thousands of people, especially because it's been copied and shared by a lot of other YouTubers around the world. And when this video initially came out, I was really excited about all the good that it would do in exposing the fake parlor trick of Todd White. And I started to see that, no, some people just didn't care. Some people actually didn't mind that it might be a trick, and a lot of people just assumed there's no way it could be a trick. Over the past five years, I've really started to see something that I think could be called charismatic confirmation bias. And I'm going to show you a really good example of that from the recent roundtable discussion from the American Gospel Film Project. Justin Peters is going to take out his laptop and he's going to show Dr. Sam Storms and Dr. Michael Brown this two-minute video. And Sam Storms will respond by saying this. I don't care if this was a fabrication. But let's go through the entire segment and we'll start at the beginning when the topic of Todd White and the leg lengthening first comes up. I'll be adding a lot more video clips and commentary as well. Todd White is famous for his YouTube channel. He goes around and finds people randomly on the street and asks them if they have anything wrong. You know, bursitis, you know, sh shoulder sore, got a backache, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. Do you have anything physically that gives you any trouble? At all? Back. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. So is it hurt right now? Like when you're moving around? A little bit. And he puts people that sits them down and has them straighten their legs out, holding one foot in each hand. And he puts the legs together. And without exception, one leg is just about that much shorter than the other one. Okay. It's the same thing. I want you to look and see. Come down here. You want to see this from this angle. Come down here and tell me which leg is short. Come here. Let's throw in your back out. Wait. The left one, right? It's at least an inch short, right? 100% of the time. And he commands the leg to grow. And 100% of the time, it grows to match the other leg. He has 100% success. Oh, right now, that? in Jesus' name. <laughs> this has been exposed as a trick. It's intentional deception. In fact, um, let me just pull it up. I want y'all to I want y'all to see this. I don't know Todd White, just while you're surfing there. I've never met him. I've never listened to him speak. I do know from credible witnesses that he has led hundreds of people to saving faith in Christ. Sam Storm says he's never met him, he's never even listened to him one time, yet he knows some things about him for sure. This is the same guy who said something very similar about Benny Hinn. I don't know Benny Hinn personally. I've heard that he has changed his ways with regard to the prosperity gospel. He's publicly repented of that. I still believe in prosperity, but let's look at what the Bible says. The message of prosperity is in the Bible. We, we, we cannot deny that if we give, we receive. We cannot deny God will bless us. That's in the Bible. You can't erase it. No way. God wants to bless his people way more than you ever want to receive that blessing. I don't know Benny Hinn personally. I um, I abhor the prosperity gospel. I'll just be perfectly blunt about it. it says you'll be blessed coming in, blessed coming out, blessed in everything you do, running over blessings. What did God really promise? Did he just promise no lack? No, he promised way more than that, if we will only accept it. I feel a glorious anointing. I want to pray with you right now that God Almighty will give you abundance you have never experienced in your life. After the Lord will, will so abundantly bless you, he'll open the windows of heaven and put on you a blessing. You'll not be able to even contain it like it says in Malachi. I trust that Benny has seen the light of day in that regard and has made some changes. I don't know that. Lord, give them that abundance you promised in your word. You said you'll come in, you'll go out. Blessed, blessed. Everything you touch will prosper and multiply. You'll land, oh, and never borrow. You'll be the head, not the tail, above, not beneath. It's your word, Lord, it's your word. And let abundance begin to flow in their life like never before. Amen and amen and amen. Okay, it's time to give now. I know your faith has been lifted. It's time to sow seed. The information is on the screen for you now. I've been ridiculed by several individuals when they heard me say, yes, Benny Hinn is a born again man of God. Does he have a faulty theology and sometimes a manipulative minister style? Yes, but the man loves Jesus. I'm convinced of that. 
And let's not forget how absolutely certain Sam Storms was of the character and the trustworthiness of his dear, close, personal friend, Mike Bickle. He made that extremely clear on Remnant Radio and in this very roundtable discussion. When people listen to these stories, I know your response, folks. And it, it, it comes down, basically, either they are genuinely true or Mike Bickle is a pathological liar. And he's not a pathological liar. I know this man deeply. Um, Mike Bickle is probably my best friend in this world. I know this man to the depths of his soul. I can't think of a more biblically orthodox, humble, Christ-exalting individual. So Sam Storms believes that he has some really good insider information about these people. Whether he knows them personally or just knows of them, he's going to give you his opinion and you really need to trust him. But there's one group that you should never, ever listen to or trust. Is that maybe God is just telling all of us to dial it down a little bit. I mean, especially in this age of these so-called discernment bloggers. I mean, if you comb, if you part your hair on the wrong side, they're going to tell you you're going to hell. I mean, it's almost that bad. And they're vilifying godly people. Unfortunately, the, the so-called discernment bloggers are doing that very thing. They're, they're just crucifying the body of Christ, and it's, it's reprehensible. Whenever we talked, it was always about, about Jesus, about loving God, about, about the Word of God. When I asked him something, a practical question with his ministry, he had no idea about income or what came in or, or how. Speaking of Todd White's income, here's a clip from a video I made about Benny Hinn, a big documentary about Benny Hinn that I put up just a few weeks ago. This is the Form 990 from Lifestyle Christianity for the year 2015, shortly after Todd White started to become very popular. He was paying himself $625,000 a year. I went public with that information. I put it on my blog, and then when I got a YouTube channel, I made videos about it. And since then, he isn't filing his Form 990s. The most recent one is from 2019, and it is blank. They don't show any money coming in, and they don't show anybody getting paid. Oh yeah, that's not fishy. Hey! Here's a video from Awakening Europe in July of 2022, where Todd White is getting the crowd all worked up about how they should all expect healing. So a guy's being brought down the aisle in a wheelchair, and you're going to see him try to get up, but he'll fall over, and the camera immediately goes back up to Todd. Hey! Woo! Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Come on! In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be made whole in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But he had this tremendous excitement about praying for the sick. He had this enthusiasm and he talked to me, again, I'm only giving you my knowledge of him, talked about when he was working a secular job and just started praying for the sick and seeing, seeing people healed, etc. So I made this video in August of 2019 and it shows Todd White telling the same exact story with completely different details. As time has gone by, the details have gotten even more dramatic and he's become even more of a hero figure, which is basically what a narcissist tends to do. I actually prayed for six to seven people every day, made it a mandate. So he prayed for six to seven people every day for three and a half months. Mm -hmm. I prayed that way for about three and a half months. So probably about 500 people, I didn't see any manifestation. So before his healing started to work, he prayed for about 500 people in this early version of the story. And I would always come so back to nothing God. Nothing happened. Yep. And you're doing this for how long? Three about and a half? three and a half months. And you would think- Five that, to seven people yeah, a day? Every day. And you're getting no results? None. Yeah. You keep doing it. I just keep doing it. Went for like a long time, like three and a half months, we prayed for an average of 10 people every day. In this version of the story, he prayed for an average of 10 people every day. And I saw no miracles at all, prayed for over 900 people. You heard it, folks, over 900 people, even though earlier he said it was about 500 people. Without seeing anything. But every time I went back to my Bible, it still said the same thing. <laughs> it didn't change. It's so true. I went back and it said, these signs will follow them that believe. I'm like, Lord, help my belief. I, I, obviously, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus with all my heart, and I know they need healed. And so kept praying, kept praying. Prayed for over almost 1,000 people. 
I've been in so many situations where I've had stuff that I've been dealing with and and like like I'll tell you a simple one. Uh, I tore my knee one time and I'm like, man, I I don't like this, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy that's praying for the sick all the time, you know, all the time. It's never stopped. It's always been nonstop. It's, it's always happening. So I'm praying for, I'm praying for people. I tear my knee and I, I end up going to a doctor. My doctor is Jewish. He's a Jewish doctor. So I go in there and I tell him, Jesus is going to heal me, man. And he said, listen, I'm Jewish and I don't believe like you believe, but you can see right here, they did the MRI. There is a tear right here and you need to understand that we have to operate on this because your knee's not going back to normal. And I said, man, I'm telling you, Jesus is going to heal me. He goes, all right. He goes, you're very zealous for what you believe in. He goes, that's great. So we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing. I didn't get to see it healed and it was a bummer. <laughs> So he goes on for another seven or eight minutes, but basically what happens is right before he's about to have surgery, he finally does get healed. And God tells him to go through with the surgery anyway, because that's what he wants him to do in order for him to be a witness to the Jewish doctor. But in this panel discussion, he mentions none of that. He simply says that he wasn't healed and he had to go and get his torn knee fixed through surgery. I can tell you what I went through personally and just, I, I had torn my knee and I didn't get healed. And... I had had people pray for me and my knee did not get healed and I had a torn meniscus and went through surgery and came out of surgery and was hurting really bad in my knee. And so surgery was scheduled for three weeks later. I had Dan pray for me, all that stuff. So I'm, I called Dan one morning and I'm, 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 a little, I'm a little overwhelmed because I told this Jewish guy that this Jewish doctor, God's, God's son, one of his sons, that, that he doesn't know it, right? In the Messiah, in Christ. I said, man, God's going to heal my knee. So I'm like, man, I just... God, it'll be great for him to see that he healed my knee, you know? And I'm thinking, heal me because of him, you know, for his sake, not because of me. God would heal you whether anybody found out or not, because he's just good like that. So um, I, I'm there with that. I called Dan on the phone. I said, man, my knee is not healed. He goes, I said, man, I just want to kneel down. I just want to worship God, man. You know, and I prayed for a bunch of knees in the midst of this thing. And like people's knees are getting healed, you know? And I'm not really frustrated with it not happening for me except the fact of this Jewish guy. So God says to me, or, or I kneel on the floor, and I, I'm like, I just want to kneel down. I'm trying to squeeze my knee. And I hear this voice, this still small voice, just go ahead. And I kneel and bent the whole way, and my knee was completely healed. It was ridiculous, man. I had torn my knee, and I didn't get healed. And I had had people pray for me, and my knee did not get healed. And I had a torn meniscus and went through surgery and came out of surgery and was hurting really bad in my knee and my knee was completely healed. It was ridiculous, man. And my knee did not get healed, and I had a torn meniscus and went through surgery. And my knee was completely healed. It was ridiculous, man. Todd White has built a lucrative career for himself by telling stories, and some people just believe them, even when he's obviously not telling the truth. Does this remind you of anybody else? It's March 7th, 1983, so it's about four months after we've been at Kent City. In came this most unusual man walking into my office. And so it's nice and warm outside. Had been a couple weeks. This man walks in my office with a winter coat on. When he originally prophesied When he originally it. prophesied all this, and it, it was, was hot outside. Yeah, he was. He comes walking in in a winter coat. Walking in as a total stranger. He's about 55 or 60 in overalls, wearing a winter coat. And it was about 70 degrees out. <laughs> The official weather report for that day, March 7th, 1983, high of 51, low of 34. It was about 70 degrees out. <laughs> when he originally prophesied, when he originally it. prophesied all this, and it, it was, was hot outside. The Kansas City Times reported that on March 7th, 1983, the high was 48 and the low was 45. It was about 70 degrees out. 500 people. I prayed for over almost 1,000 people. And my knee did not get healed, and I had a torn meniscus and went through surgery. And my knee was completely healed. It was ridiculous, man. So I would, I would, the thing I would wonder about is all the people that have attested to being healed on these YouTube things, and it's nothing to do with legs. It's eyes, it's pain here and there. The people yeah, that would, long term I'm, say they're healed. Hold that, that, hold that thought, because yeah. I, I can answer that. And, and then if... Uh, the leg length thing, you, anybody could make it look a certain way, but if the lifelong back problem disappeared after that, that would be my bigger issue. Okay, let's walk. Leg shorter than the other one? No. And it throws you back out. Okay, so regardless right. of, like, well, yeah, no matter what. Like, so what I'll do, regardless of what you believe, I'm going to pray for you, and Jesus is going to grow your leg out and heal your back. 
You don't even have to believe, dude. So you get into the, the weirdest place of belief that you want. You can unbelieve as much as you want. And God's going to grow your leg out and heal your back. I promise, man. Okay. Right now. Jesus' name. Look at it. See it? Whoa. Look at that. Do you guys see that right there? Yes. Right. It's longer now than the other one. <laughs> That's nuts. So, Father, I thank you for a brand new back, God. I thank you that it's not about religion. It's about Jesus. Now, I want to show you how he did it. Now we're going to see Todd White's clip sped up quite a bit and looped back and forth. Now, this is where we can see what's really going on here. The leg on our right is supposed to be the short leg, and this is the leg which should be miraculously growing, but it's not. Look at the leg on our left. That's where all the action is. That's what's actually being manipulated. You can see that Todd is actually pivoting or shifting the foot of the so-called long leg so that the heels match. Now, he's doing this very slowly over time, but it's painfully obvious when you speed up the clip. That is intentional, deliberate deception. He know, and the reason he could tell that guy, remember when he said it doesn't matter what you believe, you can get to the weirdest state of, of unbelief you want? The reason he could say that to that man with such confidence is because he knew full well that what he was about to do was a trick. And he's right. It doesn't matter what that guy believed because that was intentional And you know that for deception. a fact. You can say, just, 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 you stopped. can say before God, without any possible doubt that you know Todd intentionally performed a trick on yes, that guy's leg. Yes, because he, does, he has done that thousands of times, hundreds oh, okay. at so, minimum. All right, so the so little, the little I know of Todd... Charlatan's, yeah. it's, a, it's an old leg lengthening I, routine. I, I, I I under, this is where your picky uno distinction with charlatan comes in. No, no, it's not picky in here. This is much more major. I was in, a, in the Pentecostal church where I got saved. There was a pastor that suddenly disco discovered praying for people's legs, and they grew out, and all that. And it was one of the things that made me very skeptical, because well, we went home and grew each other's legs out. We just sat you down. We started doing it. It's like, whoa, look at this. And I watched the miracle with the arm length thing. It was just the sleep. Wow, this is so bizarre. He's telling the story of how, as a young Christian in a Pentecostal church, he became skeptical of what he was seeing because it was fake. He doesn't go any further and explain why it's not fake. He admits, yeah, we were doing this fake thing ourselves. So... That was, that, that was almost 50 years ago, mm -hmm. all right? It's nothing new. It's just oh, okay. made it popular with you. All I can say is that my knowledge of Todd is behind the scenes and him being as raw and open. There's everything he's done is sincere. Everything he's done is sincere. Everything, everything he's, he's done, done is, done is sincere. sincere. And my knee was completely healed. It was ridiculous, man. Uh, look, we, uh, he prayed for someone. There was a friend that was visiting, got him to pray, you know, a, a woman with a serious condition. As he prayed over her, he started praying some specific things. He knew nothing of her. Everybody was blown away because it kind of read her mail. And he goes, the Lord's amazing, isn't he? The most guileless way. But my question is, if nothing happened, if, if he willingly has deceived all these people, then how is it that so many have attested lasting healing afterwards? Here's a verse that really seems worth mentioning. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. That's Jesus talking in Matthew 24, verse 24. Here's another thing that Jesus said. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's from Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Because sleight of hand, Charlotte's trick is not going to do it. That's what we just witnessed, Sam. Did, I mean, you saw that, right? But, but then the back wouldn't be yeah, healed. Yeah. I want you to notice something right there. Dr. Michael Brown said, but then the back wouldn't be healed. In other words, he watched the video one time, and there was a claim that somebody's back was healed. And he's already certain that it is true. He doesn't have to research it. He doesn't have to look into it any further. He saw the video where somebody said their back was healed, and he's just going to take it at face value. But when he has shown substantial evidence that Todd White is not lengthening somebody's leg, but he's actually tricking them, he's pulling their leg, he says, well, I, I need more information. I would have to look at it further. I would have to research it further, which he will never do. I think that's a really good example of that charismatic confirmation bias that I mentioned in the beginning of this video. But then the back wouldn't be yeah. healed. Yeah. 
Uh, honestly, I, I, I don't know how to interpret that. 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 I would just, my response is this. Let's just assume you're right. You may have a case that this was fabricated. What's my response going to be? My response is going to be, I'm going to pray all the more fervently and frequently for anybody who has back problems. I don't care if this was a fabrication. I don't care if this was a fabrication. I don't know how to interpret that. I don't care if this was a fabrication. Now, I would only care if I'm asked to uh, give an assessment of Todd White personally, but I'm not, and I don't know him, and I don't have the, n the knowledge and the insight to do that. I would call this shirking your responsibility as a pastor, especially a charismatic pastor. How about this verse? Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Ephesians 5.11. But my point is this. We, you bring up all of these examples of people that you consider to be charlatans and to be fakery, and to what end? Okay, so you've ex maybe have exposed somebody. Um, yeah. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. The, the end that I see in view is I'm going to commit myself all the more to doing it the right way, praying for the sick in the name of Jesus. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I'm seeing something like a form of idolatry towards healing, so much so that even when fake healing is being exposed, it bothers him. I don't know why it bothers him, but he's clearly bothered by people exposing false healers. I probably shouldn't speculate any further on that. Leave a comment, I guess, if you have a thought. Praying fervently for any and every disease in the name of Christ, trusting in the heart of God and the power of God according to his good will to bring healing. So again, I think that just bring, comes us back almost full circle to the orientation of how these sorts of things are going to affect us in ministry. So my guess is that, and you correct me if I'm wrong, do you have a healing prayer ministry at your church with people who've trained in healing prayer? Sam Storms really doesn't seem to care that people are being deceived. He really doesn't seem to care that people are being deeply hurt by false healers. The more I watch this, the more I'm really shocked at how little they seem to care about precious souls within the church. These men seem to be pretty oblivious to the many former charismatics who are actually leaving Christianity altogether because of the way they've been mistreated and misguided, the way they've been lied to, and in some cases, the way they've seen their own friends and family members die as a result of bad healing teaching from bad charismatics. And instead of addressing the very serious problem of the fakes and frauds within their midst, they're going to instead go after Jim and Justin and ask them if they're praying as much as they should be which is a complete distraction. And they lay hands on the sick and they anoint them with oil no, on a regular have, basis. We have, we have intercessors. I mean, in fact, the one person I talked about earlier who's likely going to die is one of those intercessors. But we don't train healing prayer people. We have people who pray for the sick. We have prayer chains that we put information we do. on. We and, and we're going to go back in light of something like this and say, look, here's, how, here's what you should do. Here's what you shouldn't do. I, I guess it's just a that? difference. It's, it feels like this is being paraded to mock you got that, folks? If you're trying to point out false teachers who are doing great harm within the church, well, you're probably just mocking. You're probably just doing it for the wrong reasons. And to create a cynical, a skeptical mindset in people rather than saying, you know, there are charlatans out there. It's too bad. Let's expose them when we have evidence to that effect. Which would mean pretty much never. Based on what these men are saying and the way they've behaved for their entire careers, they will never expose anyone because they will never look for or believe that there is any evidence. And if they are brought evidence, they will oftentimes attack the person who's bringing the evidence and ignore the perpetrator. So-called discernment bloggers are doing that very thing. They're, they're just crucifying the body of Christ, and it's, it's reprehensible. But in the meantime, let's obey God's word. Let's pursue, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 14, 1, especially prophecy. Because if you're not, you're sinning. I'm having a real hard time believing that anybody takes this man seriously as a Bible scholar. You know what's sinful? It's so-called prophets like this. 13121 is a number uh, that has just come to me that I believe is um, significant. I don't know. You've never met you, never talked to you, not connected to you in your life in any way. And you've never told me that. You've ne I've never met you or seen you in my life. Is anybody here that has the birthday 228? 
you. 12, 6, 0, 6, 1, Psalms 1, 2, 6, verse 6. This is the false prophet Chris Reed looking at his tablet, getting people's names and addresses and phone numbers and birthdays. Wow. Amazing how he can use Wi-Fi to get messages from God. This is the world that Sam Storms has been perpetuating his entire lifetime. And I can already imagine what he and Dr. Michael Brown would say. Sure, this might be a little flaky, but how do you know for sure it's not fake? If you've watched this video all the way up to this point, I want to say thank you. And I want to say you have every right to be a good Berean and to show skepticism where skepticism is needed. That's a commandment in Scripture. Earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially prophecy. And, and I can agree with most of that. You say this is being displayed or paraded in order to mock. I think that these men, the Justin critiques, are mocking the true gift of healing. The true, the true act of healing and the true so, power of God to heal. I so think what, these guys are the ones making the mockery of it. Todd so White makes sounds a mockery like you're of it. Saying, so we're going to get even. Once again, instead of admitting, yes, frauds within the church are a really bad thing and they do mock God. They do mock true Christianity. Instead, he's projecting on Jim and Justin here and saying that you're just trying to get even. Hmm. And we're going to mock no, them no, in no. return. No. no, I'm saying you're, you're saying that you're concerned that this is being done to mock. I'm saying these... These are men that are mocking. These are men that are mocking what you guys believe. These are men that I think they and, make a mockery of scripture I, through this type of chicanery. And, and they have millions of followers, millions of followers. And to say that Todd White loves God, that he loves people, I would say no, he doesn't. I mean, if I love someone and if I love God, I'm not out there intentionally deceiving people. And he the, and he would tell the, you to your face that you have falsely judged him and that he's not intentionally it, deceiving anyone. There's, there's and that hundreds he's not. of these kind of video that he's done. I, I understand. The, que the question is, if someone is actually healed, or, or, all I know is, I, I, all I know is this, that you cannot sit here and say you know for a fact that he is doing a cheap product. If you believe it strongly, but you do not know it for a fact. It's, and it's, as the time I've spent with him, off it. the record, behind the scenes, now I don't see that as proof. I see that as interesting, but I have to examine it, but I have, but to, I examine have to examine it, it for a, a great length if I'm gonna come to a conclusion. But, but either way, he could be, he could really feel that something's happening. He could be, he could, be, he could, he really, could really feel that feel something's, that something's happening. happening. What you're watching is two men who refuse to admit that something might actually be fake. They would have to actually look at it in a little bit more detail, they're saying, which they will never do. Now, here's what I did. I found another very, very popular video of Todd White doing the leg lengthening stunt. I took the part where he's doing the actual leg lengthening. I sped it up just like in the original clip, and you'll see the same exact trick being done. Without knowing it, Sam Storms does a great job of clarifying what the real problem is here. I don't care if this was a fabrication. Here are the conclusions that I think these gentlemen unknowingly are arriving at. Number one, evidence against false teachers is irrelevant. Number two, a popular charismatic leader is to be trusted, period. Number three, discernment ministers should be ignored. The question is, if I'm sitting with someone and they're pouring out their heart in private to me, or asking me to critique this and give them input on that. And it's, it's someone who is spending hours and hours in the presence of God every day. Someone who is sharing the gospel day and night. Someone who is calling young people to turn from sin. And the str I'm preach against sexual sin and other things in the strongest possible terms. And tells me they love to pray. And they're marveling at what God does and rejoicing in his goodness. And I have people that have gone on the street with him and told me what they saw God do. Then I'm not just going to say, I know. Well, he's, he's working cheap parlor I mean, tricks. And, and again, you can, to me, it, it undercuts the other things when you come documentation and quotes, documentation and quotes, documentation and quotes, documentation and quotes. It's, it's a personal judgment. And, and that, that, again, then the picture that people get is this is the charismatic norm is there are a bunch of charlatans and frauds and you can't trust any miracle reports. It, it produces a negative fruit of skepticism and cynicism, which is not a fruit of the Spirit any more than gullibility is a fruit of the Spirit. So where is the place for honest skepticism about outrageous claims made by men who are not qualified to do what they're doing, but who are making themselves rich in the process? 
And when might a Bible verse like this enter into the equation? But examine everything carefully, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from every form of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 and 22. Seems like this is being ignored. But your, your skepticism regarding these proofs is the same as our skepticism regarding your proofs. You, you're skeptical of this. We're skeptical of the evidences that you give for some of the miraculous. There's skepticism on both sides of the table. No. It's just what we're skeptical about. No, no, not, there's not skepticism. I'm shown a video clip in the midst of a live recording and asked to evaluate it, whereas I know the person, and I've heard many testimonies of people healed through his ministry, and if it's just a cheap parlor trick, that's not going to happen. Dr. Michael Brown has heard from people that genuine healings have taken place through Todd White. Therefore, he cannot possibly be a fraud, and any evidence that he is a fraud can and should be ignored. You're saying we can present you with thousands and thousands of documents and endless eyewitness accounts, and you're going to approach them in general with a spirit of skepticism. I'm simply looking for more evidence. That's all. I think there's a difference. Okay, I still think this is a pretty good summary, but I realize I was forgetting number four. Just kidding. <laughs> well, some of them are faking it. And there's a lot of people faking it. A lot of people report healings and you look back a year later, it, it wasn't real. Was it a lie? Some people lie. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> Father, I thank you that you would, that you would do, can someone come and play piano? Hey! Hey!